Let's name that vibrato problem with your host, April Clayton. Hello there, flutists and those following along with us. Welcome to Flute Tube episode 30, where today we will be playing everybody's favorite game show, Name That Vibrato Problem. Now, if you're here to learn how to do vibrato, I suggest that you go back and you rewatch Flute Tube episode 10. In that episode, we talk about all the basic information you need to make a great vibrato. Today is more about troubleshooting vibrato issues that creep up in even the most advanced players playing. I've been teaching a lot over Zoom lately and I can't hear my students quite as well as in person. And so today I'm going to give you tools to troubleshoot your own vibrato and make sure that you're not slipping into any of these habits that can detract from your overall vibrato. So today we're talking about ways to improve and polish your vibrato, even among the most advanced flute players. I just wish we could have an actual audience and actual contestants in the room here with me, but all of you at home, keep track of how you're doing, keep score for yourself, maybe let us know in the comments how you did. And now let's move along. I am gonna, however, throw in a disclaimer first. My playing today is for vibrato demonstration purposes only. Don't take any of the pieces or excerpts I play today as my own definitive interpretations. I'm playing everything more to explore what we can, can't, should, and shouldn't do with vibrato. And now let's go on to our first example. We'll make the first one a little bit of an easier one. Okay, the game is simple. I'm gonna throw out some examples of vibrato problems, and you at home are going to name what's wrong with my vibrato. First problem. Here's the example. See if you can figure out the issue. Did you get it? Let's listen to one more example of this same problem to see if that can help reinforce your answer. Okay, the problem here is you're playing something calm or mysterious, maybe sad, or maybe you need a pale tone color, but your vibrato is just too prominent. So let's get that fixed. All right, hopefully you get the idea of how this game works now. So let's move on to the second vibrato problem example. Second problem, here we go, try and figure it out. Did you catch it? 
Here's the second problem scenario. You're playing something in the high register that's got a lot of energy, but your vibrato gets swallowed up in your sound. You need lots of vibrato to cut through in the high register, especially when you're in a big hall, not a little echoey room like I'm in right now. Problem. Let's move along and see if you can catch this one. We're moving into trickier territory now. Could you catch that? Let's see if you can get this vibrato problem. Problem number three, scenario. Did you catch this? Here's what it is. We have note values which, combined with the tempo of the piece, encourage you to use vibrato, something like every other note. We don't want the vibrato to turn on and turn off note by note. It needs to go through more smoothly. getting trickier. This fourth one's going to be even harder, I will warn you. Take a listen and see if you can name our fourth vibrato problem. vibrato problem scenario. This one is very similar to number three, by the way. If you could tell the subtle difference listening to our example, our problem is you stress notes by getting rid of vibrato, when actually to the audience that makes them sound less stressed or less important than the notes that do have vibrato. So be sure when you're trying to stress a note, you don't get rid of the vibrato. If anything, you double down and make sure there is vibrato on those stressed notes.
Now, fifth problem. We're coming towards the end. We're going to do a total of six vibrato problem examples. So here we go with number five. Take a listen and see if you can tell what the problem is. <laughs> All right, let me explain here. You're going from a loud dynamic to a soft dynamic, but you don't change your vibrato. And so you unintentionally undo your own dynamic change. It doesn't sound nearly as different as if you change your vibrato along with your dynamic in order to reinforce the dynamic change. Listen to it again, this time with the problem solved. <laughs> Now, last problem we're going to talk about today. This is especially a big problem in early music. So we're going to use an example with Bach because for Bach, we need to be sure that we can solve this problem. Take a listen, see if you can tell what it is. turn your vibrato on and off. Like I say, especially in this early music, we want often little to no vibrato. And there are also many pieces written in the 20th or 21st century where the composer temporarily or for the entire piece wants you not to use vibrato or to use it only on very specific notes. So you need to be able to turn your vibrato on and off with this early music, I would definitely recommend practicing it sometimes with no vibrato at all on purpose. So you're entirely making the line and the phrasing and the dynamics and everything else with no help from your vibrato. wraps it up for Name That Vibrato Problem for today. Let us know in the comments how you did. Did anybody get all of the problems right? Did anybody solve all of the problems? That would be particularly impressive. Let us know. And until next time, keep doing vibrato problem free. <laughs>